Hi there everyone, welcome back to the Royal Society in London where once again I am joined by the master of the library, Keith Moore. I know that's not your actual job title, Keith. I think that would be good. Could we go with that? Yeah. Anyway, you've probably guessed what today's object is. It is that amazing globe. Keith, what is this? Where has it come from? Tell me the story. Well, if you were a gentleman in the 18th and 19th century, you might well have a, a library. As a finishing touch, you'd certainly want some globes in your library. Yeah. So this is a fairly typical library globe of the period. This is a very good one, though. It's made by the Bardin family. They were excellent globe makers in London. And it really shows you the state of knowledge of the planet at this time. I have to ask, Keith, you are a modern gentleman. Yeah. Do you have a globe in your house? I do have a globe in my house, just a little one though. <laughs> That's okay, I have one yeah. of the moon in my office. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Well, very good. I, I think it should be encouraged. Yes, all right. Yeah. We, we encourage everyone to get a globe. This one in particular though, I'm imagining might be out of most people's price range. This seems like it would be quite a valuable. It is. You would have to pay quite a few thousand pounds for one of these. Interestingly, we only have one. Uh, so this is the, the globe of the Earth. It would probably have been one of a pair with an astronomical globe, and they were dedicated to different people. So the astronomical globe uh, in this series was dedicated to Neville Maskelyne, I think, but this one to Sir Joseph Banks. Okay, and we can see that around here. Here we go, Sir Joseph Banks. Now, obviously he's a big deal at the Royal Society. There are portraits yeah. of him, he was a long time president, but he was also the botanist for Captain Cook, I believe. That's right, so he was on Cook's first voyage, the Endeavour voyage. Instrument makers very often dedicated things to the president of the Royal Society, Sir Joseph Banks. This would give them a, a, a bit of a cachet, you know, this is, this is something that Banks must have approved of. And in Banks' home in Soho Square in London, there were quite a few instrument makers and people gathered around in, in nearby houses because being close to him was actually quite profitable in his orbit. Okay. I see what you did there, Brady. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I'm, I'm learning yeah, from the yeah, yeah, okay, I'm learning yeah, yeah. from the master. Yeah. See what we see how it all comes together, know, master yeah, yeah. and all okay. turns. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now the first thing I always do when I see a globe of the earth. I know the first thing you always do. You go and look at Australia, don't you? I do. And yeah. in particular, I look for my hometown of Adelaide. And I'm about to be very disappointed because Adelaide should be about there where my finger is. But you can see not only is there no Australia, we have New Holland, we don't even have the name Australia yet. Yep. We have no Adelaide, we have no coastline, we have nothing. We have a gaping moor where South Australia and Victoria and the, that bottom half of Australia should be. That's how old this globe is. It had not yet been mapped by modern map makers of the time. That's right, it hadn't been circumnavigated. It looks very unfinished, doesn't it? So the globe itself is from 1807, so there's still quite a bit of work to do on, on uh, mapping the planet, not just uh, Australia, but the interior of Africa as well, not very well understood. Oh, can I see Africa? Oh, yeah, we can yeah, turn yeah, it. Yeah, okay, look, look at that, still It turn. works and everything. It works, yeah, yeah. yeah. Here we go. So there's actually quite a lot of it explored, but this kind of central area here, mm. very shaky, very very blank. Does it turn the other way so that we can see? Uh, it should do, but because it, we just had this conserved, I should say, it's a bit wobbly. But yes, the idea would be you would tilt it to the right direction okay. uh, to, to uh, take in the, the real tilt of the Earth, of course. You say you've just had it conserved. What's the, mm. what's the story there? Did it arrive in bad condition? Where did it arrive from? Well, we've had this globe for, for quite a while. These things, because they're made of wood and old glue, they deteriorate over time. One of the legs was very wobbly and had come off and um, some of this section as well had cracked. So it had a clean and a bit of TLC and it's going to go into an exhibition that we're doing about the shape of the Earth. An exhibition about the shape of the Earth? Isn't yeah, it? yeah, with the French Academy. Okay. Um, of course, the thing about globes like this is they're a bit of a cheat because the Earth isn't quite spherical, uh, of course. Um, so it would be interesting to have a globe that actually showed the proper shape of the Earth rather than the, the, this kind of imaginary shape. I mean, it's a little bit oblate, isn't it? But It's, it's a little bit oblate yeah. and it bulges a bit at the bottom as yeah. well. Yeah, so, not yeah. so much that you would notice to look with your eye, though. Probably not on this scale, but yeah, a little bit maybe, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. This I'm is not... a scientific account. We love a bit of accuracy, you know that. Okay, <laughs> I, I hope you're not feeding the trolls here with, with your talk about, you know, <laughs> we're cheating with the shape of the Earth, but the Earth is pretty spherical. Yeah, <laughs> no, pretty, pretty. 
Okay. You might see some lines just sketched in here. It says resolution going to Kamchatka in 1775. So what this is recording is the voyages of Captain James Cook. And of course, Banks was on his first voyage and, and here we have the voyages marked off. And of course, he's noted on the cartouche because you have just here, there's a little oval portrait set in here. And who's in the oval but, but Captain Cook? Lovely. Oh, and he gets a mention in the cut. Yeah, he, he gets a little mention down yeah. there. Yeah. To the right, Honourable Sir Joseph Banks, Bart KB, President of the Royal Society, this new British terrestrial globe. So this is what the series of globes was called, containing all the latest discoveries and communications upon the most correct and authentic observations and surveys to the year 1799 by Captain Cook and other navigators engraved from an accurate drawing by Mr. Arrowsmith, geographer. And there's a dedication there and additions to 1807 and the Bardens have signed the globe just then. So here we have Captain James Cook in an oval, very much as he appears on the globe there, yeah. re reversed. Keith, this object, this little, little frame with mm -hmm. a picture, What's the point of this? Who would have this? The Royal Society did purchase this and the seller said that it had belonged to Sir Joseph Banks, which is possible, but there was a lot of forgeries and copies going on at that period, so we don't know for sure. But people like Captain Cook were like a bit of a hero, so there would be people that would have this in their office or something. Yeah, as like, that's like right. Like you'd have a footballer on the wall or something. That, like that's that. right, yeah. Well, yeah. I wouldn't have a footballer on the wall, but you, no. you may, Brady. You yeah. Know, yeah, you would have like famous archivists and things. I, like I would, yeah. yeah. Librarians <laughs> of yeah. the past, yeah, yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> Oh, there's something on the back here. Yeah, so, so there's a little inscription on the back. Of that. Miniature of Captain Cook, FRS, bought 1893. It's got some of the details of the origin of it and things yeah. like that. Okay. What we should do, though, is have a look at a few books that tell you how to use the globe. Because, of course, this was an instrument that you could use in your library and, and instruct people on... Uh, the way the earth was. So uh, your, yourself, your children, anybody else. And we have here one of the kind of common books on, on, of the period on the use of globes. Here we go. The description and use of both the globes, the armillary sphere and orrery, exemplified in a large variety of problems in astronomy, geography, dialing, etc. So you could use this to solve problems with. Also includes a short account of the solar system. Yep, illustrated by a variety of copper plate figures. And you can see here, printed and sold by J. and W. Watkins, mathematical instrument makers, to the Royal Highness of the Duke of York. So you've got your book on the globes here. If you want to buy a globe to go with it, this is the guy you go and see. Okay. And you can see exactly what kind of things you might have been buying. So this is your, your terrestrial globe over here. And here's your orrery that you might have as well, just to show you the workings of the solar system. And here's your armillary sphere to talk about uh, the way the heavens worked. Let's take a look and see what else we have. So here we have a solar system. Nice. There we go. Very nice. And we can see various things here. So you've got the constellations around here. And this would have been how it was marked on the globe, most likely. The planets. And then we've got, got Jupiter, yeah, uh, Saturn, and the, the other ones are a bit nondescript now. Yeah, and presumably the relative sizes here. But also here you've got uh, what look like tracks of comets uh, yeah. around the sun there. So yeah, all explained in your text, of course. Brilliant. But my favourite book uh, on the use of globes is this one here. Astronomical dialogues between a gentleman and a lady wherein the doctrine of the sphere, uses of the globes and the elements of astronomy and geography are explained in a pleasant, easy and familiar way. I'm imagining uh, you at home in, in your library and uh, you, you've got your globes out and uh, you are mansplaining to your wife how, how these things work. Okay, okay. so this because is kind of a mansplaining book. That's right. right. In, in the 18th and 19th century that the little lady needed instruction in these matters. All right. I don't know, exactly, yeah, very period. Okay. But kind of hilarious to, to modernise here. Yes. 
Good morrow, said I, madam. What, hath Fontenelle made an astronomer view in good earnest? So she, she's reading Fontenelle on the globes here. Right. Yes, as you are now seeing Keith mansplain to me yeah. via the book. Right? Yeah, exactly right. Mm. Pray, sir, said she, proceed. When I come to look over Fontenelle again, I perceive I shall understand him and you much better. Madam, said I, the outward figures of these two globes you see are nearly alike. But though they are hung also and fitted up alike, yet they are almost as different from one another in their natures and properties as are the different regions that they represent. Right. So yes, the globes are showing two different things. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's various points here where uh, a bit of poetry comes in. So the lady's reaction to this is, you are now, said she, so very good that I think I must feed your vanity by owning that I was once much pleased with some verses of yours occasionally given to me, and more so now because I understand them better, having been explained of the globes, of course, after you have talked in your usual way of love and constancy and I know not what. You thus, I remember, concluded, and there's a bit of poetry here. So when the needle hath been once drawn o'er the lodestone's poles and felt its wondrous power, twill even in absence keep its truth and worth and always point towards its beloved north. And the gentleman concludes, oh, Madam, said I, you do me and my trifles a great deal of honour. So she's, she's, she's had his trifles. Okay. Yeah. Wow, I could spend all day here in the shadow of this globe having love poetry read to me by the master of the library of the Royal Society, Keith. Yeah, what can I say, Brady? I've given you the world. <laughs> Our thanks to everyone who supports Objectivity on Patreon. Some of your names are there on the screen at the moment, and you really are from all points on the globe. See what I did there, globe? little joke anyway. Patreon supporters get access to extra material, pictures, video from behind the scenes, stuff you might want to see. Plus it's you guys who really help keep this project going. Thank you very much. If you'd like to support us on Patreon, go to patreon.com objectivity. There'll be a link in the description.